I'm Paul, and I've probably been listening to vinyl records for 40 or 50 years. Hi, I'm Fred, and I've been listening to buying and buying records for about one and a half years. What would you like to tell us about your vinyl collection? Well, uh, I think you and I, Tim, yes. are of the generation when the only thing there was was records if you wanted to listen to music. Hi there, I'm Ben, Ben's Armson. I've run Ben's Collector's Records at Five Tonsgate Guildford for the last 20 and a bit years. Um, I'm still having fun. My grandparents in 1976, they bought me the White Album, which was about seven pounds at the time. I could afford three pounds, I could just about save that if I had to buy a single LP, but seven or eight pounds was well out of my reach. And, yeah. and I just remember sitting down on Boxing Day upstairs on that dance set playing it. Oh, wow. It's good, you know, but and I played it the other day. Ah. This is the first vinyl thing I ever bought. It was about a year and a half ago. Right. And um, yeah, it's Billy Joel Uptown Girl. I had another record shop in Farnham, which I'd had for two years. And uh, you know, Farnham's an all right place, but a bit of a one horse town. And uh, I thought, if I want to make any money, I'm going to have to Gil come to Guildford. Um, I've already run a record shop in Guildford for seven years, uh, which is still there now, the Collector's Record Centre down by the bus station. But I just wanted to work for myself, really. Um, so I opened here November the 3rd, 1993, which is over 20 years ago. Yeah. The rent was under half, the rates were a third. I took far less money, but I made more. I first got listening to music when I was very young, when I was sort of seven or eight years old. Uh, where I missed a year of school because uh, I had a glandular problem, a glandular fever, and it just was a reoccurring virus that kept coming back. So during that time is where I had sort of a musical education, if you like, where my parents introduced me to things like the Beatles and Simon and Garfunkel, and they sort of, some of my earliest memories are um, listening to those records and just disappearing into the covers. Um, and just sort of inventing kind of imaginary worlds. Um, well, I had a friend who um, bought me a record of a, as a favour, a uh, soundtrack to uh, Clockwork Orange, which is one of my favourite films. And, like, I really like the soundtrack. Um, so that kind of like, I thought, right, well, you know, I should probably get a record player and start collecting to sort of become popular again. But I had a few records anyway that my parents had given to me. They were, like, they were a few soundtracks and um, a few like jazz records. So, but I think, you know, just getting the soundtrack and thinking, yeah, okay, I really want to play this, so I'm going to start getting my own collection. This is, um, this is the vaccine. It's a 12 inch show vinyl, so it's quite a big artistic uh, thing to have, really. And then this comes out, and it's, you know, another work of art in itself. At the same time, it's quite attractive, really. Like, you could probably frame that and put it on a wall, and it would just it would look quite nice. And, they, and then you can look at it or something while you're listening to it and and uh, yeah it's just satisfying really to have a record to watch a record being played as opposed to because you can't really well, it's a physical CD. presence isn't it yeah. rather, rather than just something the physical process and, and if, you've got, if you've got a cd you're more likely to yeah. skip or put it on yeah. shuffle and that's yeah it's not really how this is supposed to be listened to so well, it tells a story it's just, it's yeah. a sequential it's story like, that's a very very good point mm -hmm. yeah which is probably like, you know, it's the first one that I, that I bought. Um, and, um, you know, I had it on CD and I, you know, I really liked it on CD and then got it on vinyl and it's like a whole different um, experience, really. At the moment, I've, I've got a couple of really good albums, um, which I bought this weekend, actually, which uh, I've kind of, I'm kind of wearing out already. One is by um, a jazz drummer called Magnus Ostrom who's uh, Swedish and um, it's quite that's quite amazing sort of takes me into um, a, diff a completely different world it's kind of like music from out of space it's like if aliens come down and, and made a jazz record it would sound something like that and um, the other one that I've been listening to is kind of re going back to is um, an album by a band called Pill or Public Image Limited and it's an album called Metal Box and unfortunately I've got it on CD but when uh, Pill released the, the vinyl, it came in a big sort of metal canister that looked like a film canister. And um, I like things like that. They're quite intriguing. And uh, it's kind of th someone thinking about kind of the whole, the world that the music exists in, which kind of 
one thing that excites me about records. I get good collections. Um, I, I sold a, funny enough, I sold a rare Beatles record for £700 last week. I really? paid 500 to get it, but I made 200 quid, so that was nice. It's, um, I think there is a future, but I think it is quite limited. Um, lots of people are kind of embracing vinyl again, and there's, um, if you sort of look in the record shops around sort of Soho, you'll find that vinyl is, is, is playing a big is, is playing a big uh, a big role in sort of people's purchasing. It'll probably uh, popularity will increase, um, I think, because there's a lot of classic albums that have been reissued on vinyl. The, the, the audience that needs that much better for collectors.